Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this right here is the Chicago Electric Dual MIG 131-2. Uh, this uh, little machine was made in Italy for Harbor Freight. Um, I got a chance to use it a little bit. One thing that I found very odd um, is that it uh, did not have any type of cooling fan. So when you turn this thing on, it is nearly silent or silent and um, kind of threw me off for a second. But um, after using it for a minute, um, I was uh, going through the gears in my head and said, hey, this thing needs some type of uh, uh, temperature reduction uh, for it to have any type of uh, longevity at all. So um, I cracked the cabinet open and uh, uh, see that there is a grate for air to escape but uh, no forcible means of uh, getting it in or out of the, uh, the machine. So um, after sleeping on it overnight, um, I went to Amazon and I got the best $18 fan uh, with 110 volts that had both uh, dual bearing construction and um, uh, a high uh, amount of airflow. Uh, this one's somewhere around 113 as advertised, uh, which I thought was quite nice. And um, anyways, um, in the second part of this video, um, I'll show you how it actually wired up. Stand by. Okay, we're back at it. Um, I've performed the conversion already. Uh, the fan is located here. Um, after uh, fiddling with it a little bit, um, I was able to sink all four holes through the back side by making a template. Uh, this fan uh, came with uh, two of the fan grates. I only needed one of them because uh, the back side of the housing on this one was already perforated with a bunch of holes. That uh, makes the exhaust quite nice. Um, I put a fan on the front of it just in case, uh, I don't know, a squirrel or a rat or whatever wants to get up in there and uh, can't get through the fan. So um, uh, I tried it uh, the way that it, uh, was most intuitive to me, which I was going to uh, evacuate the um, case uh, by sending the flow of air out through the back. Well, after turning it on and all that good stuff, I noticed that the uh, bottom of the uh, welder inside of here is uh, also perforated so it would be pulling most of the air from these little slots on the bottom of it and I kind of feared that it really wouldn't circulate much uh, inside of there it would straight remove heat from the the uh, the cabinet but I, I think that it would probably be more efficient cooling wise uh, to blow air directly onto the transformer um, as a direct result um, there will be airflow which will in turn um, cool these uh, DC rectifiers here uh, I think it's a win-win in that situation uh, there could be arguments made the other direction but uh, after actually plugging it in and all that good stuff uh, it just makes better sense to me to um, uh, send it across this transformer and then out through the bottom um, there is a gap on the bottom so there is no actual um, major restriction of airflow uh, from this thing um, so that's the way it went um, so uh, it, it actually sounds very nice and I'll go ahead and turn it on here. It sounds very much like uh, any welder um, I ever uh, turned on and the sound will quiet down just a little bit once the uh, cover um, is on. Um, so let's uh, take a second here and kind of go through some of the parts um, this right here is the um, transformer um, there's a, another transformer up on top um, it, it steps up the voltage and steps down the voltage depending on which way it's wired up here um, these are the rectifier plates there's little diodes that are 
uh, affixed to these aluminum plates. Uh, the aluminum plates uh, dissipate heat quite well, so they put a couple of diodes for each plate and they oppose them, uh, one for each leg of the transformer. Um, this is a DC, it's AC coming out of the transformer and it's rectified into a DC signal uh, for the actual welding. And uh, these are the control switches up in the front. There is a control board. Um, there is a motor. You can barely see it from this angle, but it's right back in here. And that is for the uh, outlay of the, uh, in this case, uh, the uh, FCAW wire. Um, this particular wire uh, that's in it, um, I'm going to run it out real quick, like, but it, it's the uh, Harbor Freight brand. It, it, it'll get stuff stuck together, but if you really want to um, use a better wire for these machines, you want to use the uh, NR211 MP from Lincoln. Um, there's probably uh, other brands that are similar, but uh, the stuff from Harbor Freight was not really very good. A lot spatter and stuff like that, but it does work. Um, you just uh, make sure that uh, when you're going to use this, this machine is capable of uh, hooking up gas to it and you could run MIG with the gas and regulator um, or you could run the flux core wire um, w w without. And this machine is running flux core right now and um, it, it, it actually works okay for uh, relatively thin stuff so um, if uh, you have uh, concerns if your welder you think might be running too hot little $18 fan and a little bit of elbow grease will definitely um, make a welder out of this thing uh, here is a uh, bonus clip uh, <laughs> I, uh, put the cover back on. Uh, by the way, that there are 17 screws that holds this enclosure on. I uh, wanted to give a, uh, a handy shout to this big huge magnet. I think you can get these at either uh, Harbor Freight or at uh, one of the uh, other uh, range type stores. Uh, what do we got? Tractor Supply here. Uh, but anyways, it's a huge magnet that has a, a post sticking out of it for your ground. And if you're doing work onto something, you clip your ground lead, directly do this thing, and man, it really makes a, a, a nice work out of it. But uh, short of that, I just wanted to uh, let you guys hear the fan with the enclosure on it. Um doesn't significantly uh, increase the sound in your shop but uh, with these louvers and all that good stuff and I think uh, it'll uh, give this welder here probably the best chance of longevity thanks for watching